Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Ange today. Bill is out today, so Bill. <laughs> Damn, I keep doing that. I keep doing that, I don't know why. So Ange, today what we're talking about is 20 reasons why the Florida real estate market is changing forever in a lot of people's opinions. Okay? Is that changing for good or bad? Well, or that's the whole thing is we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go down, I collected a bunch of reasons why okay. These people think that Florida housing market, and it's not just Florida too. I think this has to do with all coastal towns and you know a lot of places. But we're gonna go. You know, this, these articles are about Florida, mm -hmm. particularly. You know, is the Florida housing market changing forever? All right. I'll give you an example. You know, and I, I'm gonna look at the list. Okay. One of them that's saying the real estate market is gonna change forever is because of climate change. The climate's always changing, so yes. Right. On the, on the last video, you said, yeah, it's changing every day. And a few people post it, just letting you know. They post it, they say, yeah, it's, it's called the weather. No, but, that, but, <laughs> but, but the weather is, is, in a technical term, it's not weather. It's climate. Right, so, and it right. Changes, it's changing every minute constantly. Now, it, is it getting worse? Like meaning like warmer, hotter in certain areas. Yes, of course. Well, I think what you know, a lot, uh, I think areas, a lot of yeah. people are saying that real estate is being affected because the climate, especially in Florida, is because you know the sea rise. You know, that some people were saying that Miami. Remember, we were just talking about that in another video that Miami. People are saying in five to thirty years, Miami is going to be underwater. I, I don't think it'll be five to thirty years. Maybe like in thirty thousand years, but you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. Because think about it. You know how much the water would have to rise for Miami to be underwater in five to thirty years. Well, a lot. We got a lot of comments when you made that comment about Miami, and you know, one of the comments people said was, "Hey." If if Miami's going underwater, why are so many billionaires and millionaires and rich people investing into real estate in, in Miami? Because it's a beautiful place. If, so they're like, okay, if it's going to be underwater in five, ten, and a lot of them are buying along the seashore. You know, well, put it this way. I mean, well, let's be honest. You can talk beach erosion. I can see that. You know what I mean? That it'll happen. But then they just got to dredge it and put it back or put the yeah, sand back. I yeah. get that part of it. But I don't think you're going to have like water. I mean, I, I only road I really know Miami is Collins, you know, and that's right off the beach. But I mean, I don't think you're going to get water coming, you know, unless it's like a massive hurricane with, you know, rising tides, that kind of thing. But just like where the water line will be forever. No, I don't think it's going to come up. What like do you guys think? Comment below. Do you guys think that Miami is going to be underwater in five to 30 years? In the meantime, we're working on a new series. We're going to have some guest speakers. Me and Ange and Bill are working on it. And... I don't want you guys missing that. Do me a favor, subscribe, share, and give it a thumbs up this video so that you don't miss those videos. All right, so the next one is, they said, maybe this has to do a little bit of climate change. They said real estate is changing forever because of hurricane frequency and the severity of hurricanes. So we just got hit with two major hurricanes here. And I said in numerous videos that ranch style homes, the homes that are on, on the on, ground, on the yeah. ground are kind of worthless to me. Oh yeah. Only the land is worthless because even just in our area, they got flooded, I'm talking about three to four feet of water inside the houses within a year and a half, twice. Yeah. Okay. The stilt homes, yes, they get hit by a, a tornado, they get blown off if it's a strong enough storm, but honestly, I don't know of any stilt home that had damage. No. Maybe you know, whatever they put underneath or if it's enclosed underneath, you know. Yeah, like what, they might have their shed or something kind of deal under the house. Yeah, whatever yeah. they had underneath the house. But so I think it's affecting real estate hurricanes because back in the 60s, 70s, even 80s, they were building homes at sea level. And of not course, only that, they were building them out of wood. You know, yeah, like some wood of the, frames, yeah. you know, because it was nobody did. The, now it's all block. So you, your first floor is block, which is, you know, you don't have to worry as much. Okay, you have to ch change up the drywall inside, but at least your, you know, your two by fours aren't gonna rot out. Well, I've, a lot of the homes I've seen because of these hurricanes, I saw the actual walls be blown in, they were wood. Like they couldn't- They can't, the, they can't handle the pressure. They couldn't handle the pressure. The, the homes are condemned. And uh, mm -hmm. so I, I agree with this one. Hurricanes, I think, are getting more severe. Some people are gonna argue that. I mean, put it this way, we'll definitely have years where it'll be really bad, like really bad. And then we'll probably get like a lull where it'll be pretty good. And remember, 
nobody remembers, you know, the, the perils of war. They always remember the good times. So <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> all right, let's go to the next one. It's affecting real estate changing forever in Florida is the insurance crisis. And I agree with this one 100%. They have to do something. Insurance, homeowners insurance, including car insurance, but we're talking about homeowners insurance is freaking stupid in Florida. And that's just the homeowner insurance. If you live by the water, you got to get flood insurance. Even if you live like two miles off the water, you might have to get flood insurance. You know, more and more people are choosing to go bare. What does that mean? That means that we'll go without insurance. And I don't recommend that, okay? That's an out-of-pocket expense. If, if something, something happens, happens yeah. yeah. Even if you don't have a mortgage, but you know, certain things that you could do, if you don't have a mortgage, you know, you can go what's called a la carte, you know, get fire, theft, and liability. At least you're covered for liability if somebody gets hurt, fire if it burns, or, you know, or you get robbed or something. Get the basics, you know. The big cost is, you know, flood and wind in Florida. Yeah. Talk to your insurance person, but going bare? I, I don't know about that. What do you think? No, I, w I put it this way. Unless, literally, unless you're a millionaire. And I don't mean like one million. I mean like you got five, six, seven million in the bank and you're living in a house that only goes for three to 700,000. Yeah, you could afford to fix if something goes wrong. But otherwise, no, you have to have and figure it out. You have to have it. So insurance is definitely, I agree with this one, it's definitely affecting uh, real estate forever. It's because- it Well, the other thing too is it's like, so if, if I owned my house and let's just, even numbers, just say, you know, I had this house here that we're at and I was paying a thousand dollars a year, but then I sell it to you. That's right? taxes you're talking about. No, I, no, no. But what I'm saying, here's the question I have. Then I sell it to you and you come in as the new owner and you got to get a new policy. Do you think you'd be paying the same thousand that I was? Yeah, it doesn't, insurance doesn't go from, it goes, it's determined by location of the house. And I'll tell you guys at the end of this video, what's the most important thing to look for when you know, picking out a house or a location, because I say it on many videos, but it's probably the most important thing. But um, they go by the house, year, okay. block, you know, what kind of plumbing it has, how old the roof is, you know, that's what's determined. The th so you might just pay a little bit more than why it was just because it's a new policy. Yeah, but it also depends on the person too, you know, how's their credit, how's their history, what's their claim history. Okay. A lot of that stuff follows. So yeah, insurance is definitely going to affect the real estate market forever. Population growth in Florida. Out the window, man. Okay. Crazy. <laughs> it's, it's basically supply and demand. That's all it was. During COVID, this remote work, it was a big supply and demand thing. Yep. They didn't have enough houses for people to buy in Florida from everyone coming from up north, like Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania. Yeah, but here, here's the deal now, and tell me if you think I'm correct. So these people came in, they, you know, from the tri-state area or you know anywhere California, and they came in here and they bought houses for four, five, six hundred thousand dollars that just a few years ago were going for two, three hundred thousand. Yep, they were definitely paying it. They, they didn't care. No, so they had that New York money, that tri-state area money. Right. You know, if, even if they sold their house, they probably sold it for eight, nine, a million dollars, you know? So when they buy a house like mine here for 400,000, they think they're rich. So how, so how is this changing real estate forever? I'll tell you how it's changing real estate forever. They're not gonna sell that house back to where it was to 250,000. Never, never. So in order for a first time home buyer to come in there and buy a $500,000 house, by the time you're paying insurance, by the time you're paying a P and I, by the time you're paying your taxes, your maintenance, you're probably in it, you know, run the numbers, but probably four or five grand a month just for a living. Yeah, I mean, if, if you can come up with like the 20, 25% down, you'll save yourself the PMI insurance, which is definitely several hundred dollars, you know, if you don't have that 20%, and I think it's a 20, anything about 20%, right? Yeah. And so it's like you definitely save yourself something which could help out with the other policies. But if you don't, forget it. But do you it. think population growth changed Florida real estate forever? Oh, yeah. I, actually, there's two people in my area right here that are selling their houses because there's too many people here. And they want, they're going up towards Jacksonville, which I was, I even questioned. I said, Jacksonville, 
I go, that's crazy populated. They said, no, we're going to the countryside, which I know nothing about, but I guess there's a big farm country up there mm. in Jacksonville. So that it's just a lady that's like two blocks away from me selling her house. All right, so here's another one that's saying it's changing Florida real estate forever. Tax benefits. A lot of rich people are moving here. Well, because if you Because we don't have an income tax. Yeah, well, two reasons, too. Uh, you can't, if, if you go belly up, they can't take your property from you. What so do if, you mean? Uh, there, there's, Florida has a law that if like, you know, you say you own a hundred million dollar house and you get indicted for embezzlement or something, they could take your bank account and everything else, but they can't take your property. So the, that's why a lot of people that are very- Well, wealthy, follow that up. I mean, I don't know, I don't know anything yeah. about that. They can't take your property. All right, just verify that. <laughs> so, okay, so basically f with tax benefits, you know, it was increased demand from home buyers from out of state, which we know which is changing, you know, real estate forever. Remote work. I do that. You do that, but that changed Florida real estate forever. Yeah. Um, People coming from cold climates coming here. Yeah, and you know what else it changed? It actually changed the way things are done here in Florida. Because for the longest time, Florida, a lot of places didn't have that great of uh, internet services. It was like just one service and if it went out, everybody was out. And then when the, oh, people started moving down, they started bringing in more providers. So it was a plus, it's a plus and a minus. So do you think that remote work, you know, changed Florida real estate forever? Yeah, well, yeah, because more people want that, like that, I call, what do you want to call it, island life, beach life? <clears throat> yeah, but the whole thing is, you and know, they can that, work remotely, just, just, they just, do it. Just, just say that, you know, when people move down to Florida, they always think it's going to be one big vacation and it's not going to be. It's just like... No, but I'm, I'm just talking about the weather where they want like the beautiful sun out every day, the temperatures, they can go in their pool, they can go hiking. You can't do that up north. You go to New York, right now it's it's getting cold in New York. Yeah. You know, and pretty soon it's going to, the sun is going to be down by four o'clock, it's going to be dark. Yeah. And it's going to be rainy and you're locked in the house for three months, you know? So they said another thing that's changing Florida forever um, is supply chain disruptions. We're having a lot of supply chain disruptions, even since COVID. Things are getting better, but it's more expensive to build these houses. Well, yeah, but that's pretty much, I would think, every state. You know, like, no matter where you're putting up a house, it's getting more expensive. Uh, a lot of that is just, you know, the inflation of what it costs. It's energy costs. So a lot of people are still investing in uh, rentals, investment properties in Florida, well, so they can rent them out. So that's that's affecting. I, I I don't think that's a great idea to like stop buying rentals and renting them out because unless you got serious cash, you know, you got money. Um, because if you can't rent it, then you're the guy responsible for the mortgage, you know, and you you might be really screwed. Um, think about by boy, well, your house is over on the water. How many of those houses that were there, those ranches, like? investors came in and bought them and they're going to put big houses well up. That, that's why i took one of the properties off yeah. the market is because they're going they're buying the houses that got destroyed they're knocking them down they're building 1.2 1.5 million dollar stilt houses yeah and now what is that going to do to my property oh double the value of my property oh, your property's good. and you got a big piece of property and that's, i got a big piece of property right on the water yeah it's going to go so through, and I'm, you got the I'm, only boat ramp yeah so <laughs> so i'm waiting you know i'm waiting on that so basically they said another thing that's affecting tour, um, real estate forever is tourism is recovering really strong in Florida. More and more people are coming here. Yep. And how it says, as the tourism rebounds, post-pandemic vacation rentals are increasing, putting pressure on the housing supply for locals. Yeah, I saw in the news uh, just like about a week or so ago that uh, Clearwater, like the town council, whatever you want to call them, they really like invested in getting that place back up and running and cleaning everything up and making it friendly because they rely on that during the winter months. And from what I'm told, Clearwater is like up and booming again as if like nothing happened. Like the restaurants are packed, the hotels are doing good, everyone's on the beach walking around and people say it's like, looks well, like- Well, we're gonna perfect. go to, we're gonna do a video yeah, on Clearwater we're go, Beach, we're right? Yeah, we Clearwater, yeah. Yeah, and do a video uh, This there. week. Yeah. Yep. So. Subscribe so you don't miss that one. Okay, here's another one. Retirement boom, an aging baby boomer generation is leading to a wave of retirees settling in Florida, increasing the demand for senior friendly housing options. Now, he, this is a good one. And the reason why is, is like most, most people don't live in Florida, don't realize that there's a certain, like central Florida, let's say, which is pretty big. 
um, is a big retirement for military. Like we have a lot of military people retired here. And those, Are you talking about the villages? No, not the villages. Just meaning like when I say Central Florida, it's like I could talk about maybe as high as the villages and has come all the way down to like a little maybe past Tampa, or maybe Sarasota. I don't know. I don't know well, how yeah, they do that yeah. map. But what I'm getting at is because you, you're talking to retirees and we have a huge retirement of like military and it's like tens of thousands of military well, retirees yeah. and law enforcement, firefighters, you know, school teachers. A, a lot of people move here for retirement because nice weather, not that expensive. I, I'm actually working on a video of the benefits of retiring in Florida, but believe it or not, Florida is not the number one retirement place anymore. It used to be. It's, what is? Yeah, I think it's Tennessee. Tennessee. Well, I, I could see that. I mean, this way, I like Tennessee. I'm not a fan of Nashville because it's like being in Vegas, you know, and I'm not a fan of Vegas because I'm, I'm just not a gambler. But uh, and it's like very overcrowded. But when you go, if you go to the outskirts of, you know, you start going, uh, Tennessee is a beautiful country. You know, it's great towns and stuff like that. People are awesome, just like here. You know, we, we got, you know, we got some great places here, just like Georgia and the Carolinas. You know, I could see that that whole handle going all the way up, you know, yeah. doing very well. All right, so another reason is construction costs. The cost of labor material has increased significantly, making construction so expensive that the houses are expensive. It's not, it's out of the builder's hands, basically. But uh, I get that. Let me ask you this, because you deal with this stuff. Um, uh, yeah. Now, a lot of these houses they're building, you know, I mean, new codes are always changing, but a lot of these people want these fancy houses, you know, the way they look on the outside. You know what? Does that drive the costs up a lot? Yeah, it drives the cost up a lot. Yeah, but the whole thing too is like you know, one of one of the people that watched the uh, this channel, you know, they had a comment and it made a lot of sense. This comment, they said, people want. They, how did how did this person put it? They put it that everybody could afford a home, but the homes that they want or are willing to live in, they can't afford. Which I kind agree. of it we, makes a hundred percent sense. It makes sense. Yeah. So this this. Um, watcher of the channel said said that basically if you want to buy a home you could buy a home but you just got to buy a home that you could afford not yeah. a home that you can't afford and i could definitely tell that a lot of people are stretching their budgets on, that's what i was getting housing. at yeah when they go and they're like you know i want five bedrooms and four bathrooms and you know think about it each one costs you another 20 30 grand yeah. you know okay increase foreign investments so basically yeah this is still foreign is is you're trying to say like yeah uh, out of, investors out of from countries o yeah investors from overseas especially from latin america attract to florida strong market and testify you know intensifying the competition and driving prices well, up this this climate is especially since you're saying like you know it's basically south america or latin countries is very similar for them uh, you know so like they they feel very comfortable in this environment uh, there's not much of a difference, just maybe the language barrier in whatever they do. Uh, but I can see that where like up north in New York and Jersey, they get a lot of people coming from Asia buying up all. I get phone calls all the time from my house uh, up in Long Island that I always get uh, Chinese realtors calling me and I just tell them not selling because they're trying to buy it at a cut rate, you know. But All right, so let's go to the next one. Another one that's changing Florida real estate forever is limited land availability. Prime coastal and urban land has become scarce, leading to higher prices and more competition for the remaining plots, which is true. So right now, like the builders, they're going out, you know, the Lenars and all that, they're going out in the boondocks and buying, they're building thousands of homes yeah. at one time. So they're buying cheap land because that's where it is. But try to buy land along the coast. You know, like you're talking about like just in my neighborhood, 60 feet by 110 feet of coastal waterfront. You're talking about three, four hundred thousand dollars, which just is, for raw land, which is which is expensive. But I'm going to take it back to New York. I have a friend that uh, bought land in Long Island, not too far from where we live. I'm not going to mention his name on camera or nothing. He paid just for his land, at like which is maybe like what is it? What, what would Long Island be like? Ninety, maybe one hundred and ten, give or take, and in, in width. Yeah. By sixty, seventy-five in width, he paid six hundred thousand for that, and that's on the water, on the bay, just the land, six hundred thousand. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then then he built a house for another, you know. Well, that's whatever. changing, you know, yeah. changing the Florida housing market forever. Strict building codes due to hurricane risks. New building codes require more expensive construction material and methods adding a cost to new homes. And I agree with that 100%. So you're talking about like the house that I'm building, because it has to be on stilts, I added 140,000 to the price of the house 
just because I have to be 18 feet up in the air. So that, that's just for the silts to go into the ground, Well, it's right? Well, it's because I have to put the HVAC system 18 feet up in the air, I have to run pipes 18 feet up in the air, I have to run plumbing 18 feet up in the air. You know, there's a lot more to it. And then you gotta build a foundation that could support stilts and could support, so the codes. And then I have to do impact windows, hurricane impact windows. Yeah, because you're up that high too, yeah. Oh, uh, coastal, it's required here yeah, by code. You know, then I have to put a metal roof because, you know, during hurricanes. And a, a metal roof is about two to three times what a regular shingle well, roof well, is. Well, sometimes double. Yeah. But, so I agree with that one too. It's changed in Florida forever. Okay. Gentrification of urban areas. Many urban areas are experiencing gentrification, if I'm saying that right, leading gentrification, to gentrification, yeah. leading to displacement of higher property values, especially in cities like Miami and Tampa. So yeah, so areas that you know, even else, well, I'll say basically like take a poor area and now they're buying it up and yeah. Let's, it let's even talk about where area. I bought my land and where I'm building. Okay, Hudson, ten years ago. You know, you could have went in there and bought waterfront property for fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars for a big lot. For a big lot, yeah. And nobody, nobody wanted to go there. Nobody, <laughs> nobody wanted. To nobody go. wanted to go there. But I'm like, I want to go there, yeah, because I know what's going to happen. Now, the, the those same lots, you know, some of them are selling for three, four hundred thousand, and they're building one point five million dollar houses. Well, the, the the person we were talking to over by your house. Um, told me when I was talking to them, told me that a builder came in and offered them 358,000 for the property. And, but she said, no, I'm, I'm going to redo it all. You know, she's like, I have the money. I'm going to redo it. But you know, I was like, wow, that's a lot of money for just the property. Yeah. So I'm just going to mention a couple more affordable ho housing shortage, which is true market corrections and, and, you know, and investors coming in. So I do think at the end of the day that Florida's housing market has changed forever. Do you agree or disagree? It, I do agree. It has changed forever. It's not going to be what it was 10 years ago. Do, do you guys agree or do you guys disagree? Comment below. Also, the reason why, if you're moving to Florida or buying another house in Florida, the most important thing to look at when you're buying a house, okay, is elevation. Find out where you're buying, find out when what was the highest flood ever in that area and then find a section a piece of land or a house that's 10 feet above that at least or 8 to 10 feet above that that's the most important thing in my opinion when you're buying a house i did a whole video on how to find the perfect home so you guys could watch that but yeah i think at the end of the day florida housing market changed forever check out this video over here i picked it out just for you guys and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you and have a great day.